Hello, Facebook. I am back. I was just doing some studying not too long ago, and I just felt led to jump on and just kind of give you what the Lord was dealing with me on. So oftentimes, we are chosen to carry out a specific will. And we don't know what that's going to look like, what that's going to feel like. But when you're chosen, it's just something that you you have to be equipped to do. You didn't ask, <laughs> you know, to be the one chosen to do it. But the person that chose you had enough confidence in you that you would carry it out and you would carry it out just as they laid it out. So with that being said, I was reading over in Matthew's round about the 27th chapter where it was talking about how they were setting, finding a way to set Jesus up. Ain't it something how people will go out of their way to set you up? And you did nothing wrong. <laughs> you know, you were chosen. You was hands picked, selected, however way you want to put it, to just execute a will. But because people have certain people that they want to inherit things, to be heirs of the will, they will begin, they'll lie on you. They'll make up things about you. They will say you changed the will. Anything to make you look bad to get what they want. So the Lord began to deal with me and they, excuse me, and I may um, pronounce this name wrong, but it's testator, testator. Forgive me if I'm, uh, if I pronounced that wrong. I'm sure there's going to be a, a lot of legal people that will correct me, but, um, the testator is a person um, that the will is for. It, 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 it's their will. They the one that writes up the will. They the one that says who gets what and who gets left out. That's who, that's the testator. Remember that. The executor is the one that is appointed to administrate or, excuse me, or to carry out the wishes of the testator, which means they don't, it, it, it's not their thing, uh, it's not their estate that they are distributing. They have just been chosen to distribute. Okay, the heir is the person who receives from the estate. Now, from a natural standpoint, that could be land, that could be a home, that could be a car, that could be a bank account. So many different things that that can consist of in the natural. But then let's look at this thing from a spiritual standpoint. You know, we <laughs> we as believers, we get the now say who's heirs of anointing, uh, heirs of um, gifts of the Holy Ghost. Um chosen who's chosen now we 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 pick who we feel is chosen who we feel is worthy to receive certain things or who's worth certain things but again i want to remind you that the heir is just a person who receives they didn't ask a lot of time people are heirs and a will and they don't even know until after the fact Okay, and the executor, if I'm saying that right, uh, the executor, I'm sorry, the executor is the person that has to distribute to the heirs. Okay, now, sometimes that is a family member or a, or a close friend or it could be a priest. It, it could be anybody, whoever the tester decided they want to choose or whoever they trust. Uh, to carry out the will, that's who they choose. 
I'm sure there's times where even in families, you know, they may decide, okay, um, Andy may get the money and just squander it. He ain't going to do, you know, he's not going to do right by it. I'm going to scratch his name off and give it to Susan. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. The will, as the Bible says, it is written, it is done. You don't get to change that. So whatever the will says, whoever's supposed to receive what, that's who that executor have to um, give the estate or um, honor the wishes of the uh, tester. We don't we we don't get to change that. We don't get to change that. So that's Jesus had to also remind them. You know, you know, some people would just uh, uh, accuse you of some of the stupidest things, but yet and still, you have to carry the wheel out. Again, we don't get to pick and choose who we think is worthy. We don't get to pick and choose who we think is more anointed. We don't get to pick and choose who we think got the best tongue or who's speaking in tongue or who's not speaking in tongue. We don't get to pick and choose who we feel was chosen. We don't, we don't, we don't get, that's, that, that's not a, listen, we get into something that ain't got nothing to do with us. If we can just learn, Jesus was our perfect example. If we can just learn how to just carry out the will. Don't try to change nothing. Don't try to fix nothing. Don't try to manipulate nothing. All we have to learn how to do is just execute the will. Execute the wish. How it is listed. Whoever name is listed on that um, um, legal document, that's what has to be gone. That's what has to be um Deliver. It, it makes no difference if I feel like that you're anointed or whether I feel like that you're worthy of the money or the home or the car. I don't get to change that. Now, I do believe, you know, let, 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 hey, let me just put a springboard in there. You know, I know there's times that we wish we could. You know, because I'm sure we all have picks and chooses who we feel is more anointed or who we feel is more worthy. But God didn't give us that. <laughs> he didn't give us that authority to do that. Although I know um, we wish we did have that authority, but we don't have that authority. So we have to use um, who have already been selected to do it. That's just the way it is. And so um, we have to remember that we are just the executor, the executor of who is supposed to receive what? And we don't get to pick and choose. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, there are going to be some times, even, even as the executor of the estate, you, there may be times you may be lied on. There may be times where you, you'll look around and you realize that the person um, will that you're carrying out, you wonder, why did they pick me? Because they don't realize what you now got to go through because when you're dealing with family, they feel like they should have got the ring. They feel like they should have received the home. They feel like they should have got the car. Forgetting that that's not your will. You're just carrying it out. But you would take a lot of heat and as I was reading, Jesus said, Lord, God, why, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? So that, was, so that took me back to when, when the person passed away. They're leaving their wishes in your hand. And that can come with persecution. That can come with being talked about. That comes with being lied on. But you still have to carry it out. And there are going to be times you're going to feel forsaken. <laughs> you're going to feel abandoned. But you still have to carry it out. And you have to carry it out. Just as it's lined out. In that will.
you, we don't get to change it. We don't get to pick and choose who we feel is worthy or not worthy or um, anointed or not anointed or gifted or not gifted or speaking in tongues and or who's not speaking in tongues. We don't. And I thank God that he didn't give us that authority. I thank God he didn't give us that authority. I mean, there's some already trying to operate in, in that authority that wasn't given to them. But it's not your authority to say someone is anointed or not anointed or gifted or not gifted or, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we just get all off into stuff that don't even have anything to even do with us. So to bring this to a close, I just wanted to let someone know you don't have to fight for what is yours because what is for you is for you. What you are joint heirs, what, whatever is supposed to come to you, you don't have to fight for it. It's yours. And if whoever was chosen to execute the executor of the estate, they have to follow guidelines. Just as we were chosen to do the will of the Lord. We don't we don't get to change it. We don't get to say who we feel should make it to heaven or shouldn't make it to heaven. We don't get to judge somebody uh sins because theirs look different from our. We don't get to make those decisions. That's not up to us. If we can just do the will that's all that's all we've asked to do. We're not asked to get out no measuring tape and try to measure nobody's worth. We don't see the hard work that already done been done. All we got to do is just carry it out. I mean, the 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 individual that's leaving the wheel, they've done the hard work. They have said, This is who I feel is worthy. And we have to understand. It's their things that they are willing to family members, friends, or whoever. So they are saying, this is who I feel is worthy. It doesn't make a difference how I feel. If that person that's writing out their own personal will, they get to say who receives what and who don't. That's not for me to argue with them. That's not for me to try to bring up something, to try to uh, make that person look bad so they'll pick somebody. That ain't got nothing to do with me. And a lot of times, a person is chosen to um, execute a will. And a lot of times, they don't even know it until after the fact. So we just have to remember that being a executor of, of, of an estate, sometimes it comes with being persecuted. It comes with being lied on. Um, it comes with, oh, you you took them uh, to the courthouse or you took them to the lawyer um, and you, you made them sign the, the, the paperwork or they didn't or the person didn't know what they were doing. You catch so much flack. When people have their own personal uh, friends, families, whoever, that they feel like is more worthy of the will. But we have to remember that it's not up to us to decide. The decision has already been made. Whether you feel like I'm worthy or not, whether I feel like you're worthy or not, it doesn't matter. It is written. It is done. It is finished. You have been chosen. You will receive. And we just have to, we have to be okay with that. You know, we have to be okay with that. So with that being said, I'm going to hop off. It's been a minute, but I just, you know, wanted to encourage someone to let, to you know, because sometimes we do feel, we feel forsaken. We feel abandoned. We feel like, Lord, why did you choose me to do this? 
because it comes with so much adversity. When all you're trying to do is carry out a will. That's all you're trying to do. And you catch so much flack for it. But that don't mean we get to abandon our assignment. We still have to carry it out. With everything that we have to come up against, we still have to carry it out. And so it's not it, it, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy because some requests that you may have to give out or whatever, that's going to come with a lot of disagreement. But yet and still, you have to do it. You know, a, a person may uh, say, give Johnny a car. Johnny may be an alcoholic. And you may say, yeah, I ain't giving Johnny this car. But it is written. It is written. And it's a legal binding document. And you have to execute it whether you want to or not. So even though you may think a person is not anointed, that's not up for you to decide. That's not up for me to decide. Whether you feel like a person is worthy, that's not for you to decide. That's not for me to decide. The decision's already been made. The will has already been handed down. And so I just want to just, like I said, I just wanted to come on here. I said I wasn't going to be before you long. But I just, you know, kind of want to let someone know that even though you have been chosen, hand-selected, picked, to carry out the will of God. You have to carry it out. As it has been assigned to you. So. No matter what you have to come up against. No matter what you have to go through. Just carry out the will of God. Because there's promises. That we will be granted for being obedient. God told Jesus, I'm going to raise you in three days. I, I, I know you're going to go through a lot, but you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. But it lets you know at the time, Jesus felt like, look, <laughs> I, I feel like you done left me to, <laughs> to the wolves. I feel like you done thrown me to the wolves. And there's going to be times you're going to feel like that. But you got to keep going. You got to keep going. And you have to carry out certain things you may not want to carry out. You may have to give some things to some people that you may feel that's not worthy. You got to give it anyway. So if we can just learn to just carry out the will, just as it's written, it will be more peaceful than we trying to do it ourselves um we're trying to we don't we, we don't brought our own measuring tape to try to measure if a person is worthy or not that work done already done been done we just have to learn to stay in our lane and just carry out the wish the will i'm sorry of of god that's what we have to do and like I said, that won't come with adversity. It won't come with being lied on. It's going to come with all of that. But that don't excuse us from <laughs> yet carrying out the will. We still have to carry it out. So, again, I was reading over in Matthew's, I think it was the 27th chapter. So, you know, whenever you have time, you want to kind of go and kind of read that to kind of get more of an understanding um, to just to just know that when you have a certain calling on your life when you have been chosen hand selected you gonna go through you gonna go through 
It doesn't feel good. Don't let nobody tell you it do. Don't. Sometimes it ain't gonna look good. But you still have to do the will that you was called to do. You still got to carry it out. No matter how you feel, you still have to carry it out. So Jesus had a will that he had to carry it out. Even though it was a cup that he didn't want to bear. He didn't want to go through the things that he went through. But it was will to him. It was will to him. So it's something that he didn't have a choice. I mean, he had to do it. And because of his obedience, we was reconciled with the Father. So that's the same thing with us. When we are obedient, when we do the will that we've been called to do, the people that are attached to us, they will receive what they are supposed to receive. I don't want to uh, um, be a hindrance to anyone not getting what is rightfully theirs. I don't want to be responsible for that. So with that being said, if you've been called, if you've been picked, if you've been chosen, if you've been hand selected for a specific um, job to do in the kingdom, let's find ourselves doing it. It's not going to be easy. Trust me, it's not going to be easy. But find yourself figuring out what whatever you have to do. Because we don't want nobody left out of what is rightfully theirs. And if you have been chosen to carry out a wish. Because let's just face it. If, if the shoe was on the other feet and you wasn't the one chosen, but you was the one to, was, that, was, that, need, that, that is supposed to receive, you won't wish yours. So that's the way you have to think about it. Just saying. So with that being said, I'm going to hop on. Again, I just want to let someone know, you know, again, if you have been chosen to do the work for the kingdom, how important it is to get it done. Because we don't want no one to miss out what is rightly theirs. And so I just wanted to just kind of encourage because, you know, when you are chosen, you, you need to be encouraged. You need to be lifted up. You need much prayer. It's a lot. It's a lot. And so I just want to encourage someone that if you're one of those ones that have been chosen to do the work of the kingdom, stand firm. Stand firm. It's not going to be easy. You're going to meet opposition. People are going to lie on you. But you know, but you still got to carry out the will, the work of the Lord. So I just come to let you know, just to keep going. Keep, keep, keep pushing. Um, keep doing what you're called to do. No matter what it looks like. No matter, you know, just keep pushing. And God is going to bless you for your obedience. So thank you for those that um, that will take the time to listen. I just want to let you know we all are important. And we all have something to do for the kingdom. And we just have to figure out what that something is. And there's no big eyes and little U's. We all are important. And so it's just finding out your place. Finding out your position and operating in that. But with that being said, again, I'm going to hop off and I thank God for each and every one of you. Ones, you know, that will listen, you know, however way. I hope it blesses someone, you know, kind of hope it 
give someone that push that they need, you know, to know that <clears throat> being an executor of state, it comes with a lot. It's a lot. But if God didn't think you could do it, he wouldn't have chose you to carry it out. So you was chosen for a reason. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. Don't let nobody try to steer you from what you was called to do. You was called, you was already equipped. So I'm going to hop off and God bless. Take care. Know that God loves you. No matter what the devil is saying, just remember, God loves you. And he cares. <laughs>